Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Boeing completes a successful 737 MAX first flight, PS Engineering introduces the cocktail party effect to the cockpit, New York City may be dropping the hammer on helicopter tours. I'm Brie Cross, it's February 1st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 took to the skies for the first time last Friday. Boeing said the 737 MAX program achieved the milestone on schedule, which begins a comprehensive flight test program leading to certification and delivery. With the latest technology Leap 1B engines from CFM International and Boeing-designed advanced technology winglets, the first member of the efficient 737 MAX family completed a two-hour, 47-minute flight, taking off from Ritten Field in Ritten, Washington, and landing at Seattle's Boeing Field. During the flight, the aircraft reached a maximum altitude of 25,000 feet and an airspeed of 250 knots, which is typical of a first flight sequence. With the other three members of the 737 MAX 8 flight test fleet currently in different stages of final assembly, the 737 MAX remains on track for first delivery to Southwest Airlines in the third quarter of 2017. The Boeing 737 MAX family has 3,072 orders from 62 customers worldwide. There was a time in aviation when an audio selector panel simply selected which audio input you desired to hear. Now that's all changing as PS Engineering has announced their new PMA 8000 BTI audio selector panel, which includes a spatial technology feature they call IntelliAudio. When activated, the IntelliAudio application places the COM1 audio source sound at the relative 10 o'clock position and COM2 audio source sound at 2 o'clock relative position to the flight crew. This allows the pilot to take advantage of the multi-talker or cocktail party effect, where the brain automatically interprets and differentiates conversations at different locations for reduced listening effort and greater comprehension. Company founder and CEO Mark Schoer said, quote, When we introduced IntelliAudio two years ago, we were amazed at the reaction from the pilots when they heard IntelliAudio for the first time. The PMA 8000 BTI is a plug-and-play replacement for the popular PMA 8000 series audio panels as well as the Garmin GMA 340. Full rate deliveries will start in early February through authorized PS engineering dealers. After the break, helicopter noise leads to possible New York City Council action. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The City of New York is nearing an agreement that would cut the city's approximately 58,000 helicopter sightseeing flights in half and would eliminate all such flights on Sunday, according to sources in the administration of Mayor Bill de Blasio. The New York Post reports the move is in response to residents' complaints about noise that prompted the City Council to propose legislation to ban all tourist flights. It's reported a spokesman for the Helicopter Tourism and Jobs Council said that the air tour operators will continue to negotiate in good faith in an effort to protect the hundreds of employees in the industry and the $50 million economic impact they provide to the city. The advocate for the helicopter tour industry also pointed out that of the 20 million calls made to the city's complaint hotline last year, only 1,500 were about helicopter noise, and just 298 of those specifically mentioned tour helicopters. They said the move would likely mean the loss of 250 full-time jobs. Each week, we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. Final lift off of in this video, we watch a heart-stopping attempted landing by a British Aerospace 146 City Jet airliner at Cork Airport in Ireland. The severe crosswind forced the pilot's good decision to reject the landing. Search City Jet Abort Landing on YouTube. After these messages, Cool City Avionics makes a management change.
Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Cool City Avionics has announced management changes. Jeffrey Kelly has been named Chairman, President and CEO of Cool City Avionics. Kelly has been President of Kelly Aerospace since 2002 and will retain that position as well as his new position. The Southwest Airlines Pilot Association says it plans informational picketing next week at two locations at Luffield Airport in Dallas. According to a Pilots Association media advisory, Southwest Airlines pilots have been without an acceptable contract since 2012. Flight Safety International has promoted Steve Gross to Senior Vice President Commercial. He is responsible for Flight Safety's business aviation and regional airline training sales activities worldwide. Gross joined Flight Safety in 1996 and has held a number of positions with increasing responsibility. Air Force Secretary Deborah Lee James testified before the Senate Armed Services Committee on military space launch and the use of Russian-made rocket engines. In written testimony, she said, quote, Assured access to space requires end-to-end -end space launch services and not just a rocket engine. A hot air balloon company balloons above the valley in Napa, California, is facing a lawsuit after a pilot made a hard landing. The plaintiff is claiming the accident, which occurred in 2014, left her with medical bills and lost income. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. On Airborne Unlimited, we previously reported that Spaceport America was reinventing itself to attract businesses, tourists, and to become an event center. However, it seems they still need some extra cash. Spaceport America has now gone to the New Mexico legislature seeking a $2 million cash infusion to cover the difference between its revenue and expenses. But the state's lawmakers may not be in a position to grant the request because New Mexico depends on a prosperous oil business and the low oil prices are resulting in a tax income shortfall. New Mexico Spaceport Authority Executive Director Christine Anderson told the Albuquerque Journal that she expects Spaceport America to see a revenue of about $4 million this year, but its break-even point is north of $6 million. Anderson said that she has stretched the spaceport's budget as thin as it will go and continues to look for cost-saving measures. But she is quoted as saying, we are going to need a little more help. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.